So these were some of our first images. I won't get into the details of them. You've seen many of them. Go look at them online. But the clarity is just stunning compared to Hubble. Just stunning. And Hubble has been a workhorse for more than 30 years. Nothing like it. I mean, it was the big dog. And again, this is 100 times more powerful. We can actually get some of these images in a matter of hours, where it takes weeks for Hubble to do, and the clarity is just totally different. If you look at the bottom right, uh, that's from one of the exoplanets. That's actual data and not an image from, uh, from uh, spectroscopy. Um, you can get the composition, the elemental composition of these different planets. These are in other galaxies. And, and you know how big our solar system is. This is a long ways away. And there are hundreds of billions of galaxies, if you could just put your mind around that. And we're trying to look at 13 and a half or more billion years ago, one, two, 300 million years after the Big Bang, uh, which still blows your mind to have that kind of, cap of capability. Uh, there are some more images and some since then. Uh, you look at Jupiter up there, we've never seen it like this up close and personal. And, and Michael mentioned rings around Neptune. Now, we're all familiar with Saturn. We all did the, the grade school and middle school science. But rings around Neptune, have you ever seen that before? It just blows your mind. And just a couple of notes about the future. There are a thousand things going on in the future. And, and we'll talk about your future in, in just a minute. So we, we have things looking at all electric airplanes, planes that lower the sonic boom. Uh, for the not so young folks in the room, you know, we had the Concorde. It was uh, in addition to high cost to operate. Uh, the issue of it had to slow down so far away from its destination because of the noise it made. So we, we're working on technology to actually lower that sonic, sonic boom so we can, we can fly supersonic and not have any issues. And of course, if we go all electric, it makes it even, uh, as one guy said, gooder and gooder. Uh, we have missions going to Venus which some people, again, depend on age. We haven't gone to Venus in some people's lifetimes, uh, young adult lifetimes. Uh, that's those missions on the bottom left. On the bottom right, uh, we have missions right now on, we have a rover on Mars called Perseverance. It's picking up samples, putting it in a little tube, and sealing it, and dropping those samples on the surface. And we have Mars Sample Return Mission that's gonna go pick up those samples in a few years and actually bring those samples back. And that's not trivial. And just um, until just a few years ago, in the history of humankind, the US was the only one that successfully landed a satellite on the surface of Mars. Others have landed on Mars, but not successfully. So they ended up there. Uh, but more recently, some other countries have done it. It's not trivial. We've lost some as well. Uh, and of course, we have to go land, pick up samples, put them in a container so we don't bring any, any gook back. Uh, launch off the surface of another planet, which we haven't done before, rendezvous with another satellite and do, break the chain of contamination and have that satellite bring us, bring those samples back, crash in the desert, and so on. On the top right, uh, Michael got out of that capsule pretty easy there. But if you go back to the Apollo era, um, uh, we, we went to the moon and Artemis is the, the twin sister of Apollo, as some of you might know, and we're trying to get back to the moon, have the first a woman and person of color land on the moon, and hopefully we'll get that going pretty soon. And there's a big rocket might launch from here <laughs> in about three weeks uh, to be the first flight for Artemis to get us back to the moon. And with that, I'm just going to talk about a, a few things uh, around web. Uh, I call them takeaways. Internally, we talk knowledge management. We talk lessons learned. And sometimes I just talk stories. So one of the, one of the big things uh, I had a lot of big challenges when I came in. And, and you've heard me tell the story uh, many times. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't campaigning for the job. Actually, I was campaigning not to take the job, uh, but I, I lost the campaign. Uh, <coughs> bad, bad voting systems, right? <clears throat> so we gotta work on this IT stuff. Uh, so how do you come in and change culture? How do you create culture? That was a challenge for me because I had to come in and hit the ground running. There was no time to waste. I, I mentioned stakeholders were not happy. Uh, the Office of Management and Budget at the White House, uh, congressional folks were not happy. And who was the customer? Ultimately, the public. 
and the public was not happy, and we heard that through the media loud and clear.